Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hello, it's hobby vlog time. Been a long time since I did this. Been a long time since I did any uh, hobbying, full stop, really. That's most of the reason why. Um, but I'm back. I am back. And we're at my desk for once as well, which I don't show very often because it's disgracefully messy. But um, this is where I actually do the work uh, at my computer desk here uh, right now. If I'm I'm sitting here. I got models in front of me. I got uh, an uh, uh, Elder Scrolls music compilation up on there to listen to while I'm at it. Um, just pure relaxing nostalgia in audio form. I love it. It's very nice. Sometimes I listen to an audio book instead or a podcast or something. But today uh, I feel like music. But anyway, so um, here's a few things I'm 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 I've been working on that I will update you on. I've I've decided is worth worth mentioning. So uh, I took a long break from doing any hobby stuff because my unfortunately my mental health deteriorated to the point where I I couldn't even bring myself to pick up a paintbrush. Um, but as discussed in the other video uh, I put up recently, I'm I'm kind of back on the horse now. So uh, here's a few things I've got going on. Some of this is actually painted uh, before I stopped. Um, some of it after. But um, it's Eldar and Sister Bell mostly right now, because those are the two armies that are kind of striking my fancy at the moment. But uh, what we've got right now is this is Farseer Elian, who, you'll, who you will remember from the uh, Battle of Last Refuge series I put up, the, the two-part mini-series with, with Red Tooth. Um, I have upgraded her. I, she, you, you may remember she used to have a sword, a witchblade, I have upgraded her now with a singing spear here, which I, I, I took basically straight off one of the um, objective markers that I never ever used, which had a spear on it, and I've given her that, so now she's got this big ass um, singing spear, uh, basically as a reward for doing so well in that, um, in that little mini 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 campaign. So she's looking pretty good. Uh, it works quite well with, especially with the, like the the ribbon kind of like flowing in the breeze that matches her her coat as well. So I'm quite happy with how that turned out. She's looking really good now. Um, and yeah, I quite like singing spears. A useful little bit to kit. Uh, this one I did a while ago, but I just I don't think I've shown you guys. I don't think I even posted this one on Instagram actually. Um, this is. Another Farseer. This guy was going to be, when I was still running this army as um, Ulthway, this guy was going to be my Counts as Eldrad. However, I've uh, since the uh, Phoenix Rising came, but book came out, the Psychic Awakening thing, whatever it was called, um, and added custom craft world traits, I'm going to use those instead because narratively, I don't, I just can't figure out a way of justifying the Ulthway six up, feel no pain for this army. It just doesn't really work for me. Aside from it being, you know, make, making for some fun moments in games, but that's not really uh, a narrative justification, really. So I'm going to go with some custom craft world traits I've not totally decided on yet. Um, but uh, So this guy's probably just going to be a regular Farseer going forward, although he's supposed to represent the, the high seer of craft world, Bakarath. Like, he's he's the bit, he's the, the head honcho, the highest ranking Farseer on the craft world. Uh, and that's why he looks the way he does. Um, as you can see, he's got this helmet, which I think I took from... It's from an old High Elf uh, Warhammer Fantasy kit. I don't know which one, though. I can't remember. I just, it was one of those things that turned up in my bits box, and I thought, hmm, that'd look pretty good on an Eldar Farseer. So there it is, with the big horsehair plume and stuff. Um, so, yeah. Got him. Uh, I got this Autark. This is a Legends Autark, because these days you can't do custom war gear on Autarks. Unfortunately, but back in the day you used to be able to and this lady here. She's using the legends rules um, For an autark so she has got a fusion pistol and a striking scorpion chainsword as her loadout um, So quite a cheap and cheerful autark. I like, with, 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 I like the back banners Can't decide whether or not they're a bit much or, or not, but hey and uh, again another head swap this time I think from a uh, Sisters of Avalon kit from Fantasy as well, if I recall, I think. Um, that, that's where that head is from, I'm not sure. But anyway, there's her, and also, 
another Farseer. So that's three Farseers I've got now. I'd love to, uh, in a game at some point, run three Farseers in one battle as like a Seer Council kind of thing. I think that could be kind of epic. Uh, but uh, here's another Farseer. This guy's got a... He's, he's basically... I had Eldrad's helmet spare from this one. So I stuck it on this guy to make him look a bit different from the box standard Farseer that comes out of the box. So he's got a helmet that looks suspiciously like Eldrad's. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and he's also got a singing spear. So there you go. Uh, so that's that's those. I made another one as well. Yet another Farseer out of the Gene Stealer Cult Lady. However, because I've already got three now. Plus like three Autarchs, including the one on a bike. Um... I've kind of decided I don't really need another Farseer in this army. So I think what I'm going to do with her is I'm actually going to take her apart, clip a few bits off, and I'm actually going to turn into a, into a Dark Eldar character. Maybe a Lamean, I think they're called. The Poisoner ladies. They're the ones that you can take as retinue for your Archon. I think I might make her... Um, maybe that, maybe maybe a Succubus, maybe a uh, just a female Archon. I don't know. Uh, but I'll do something Dark Eldar related with her, I think. Uh, rather than making her into yet another Farseer, so. Uh, and I also got this guy. This is the first thing I've actually painted brand new since jumping back into the hobby this last couple of weeks. Um, I finally got this priest painted for my sister to battle. Um, he is one of the old fantasy, fantasy um, empire, what were they called, warrior priests? Um, and I, I always kind of wanted to paint one of these guys because I just thought they were really cool models. Even though I never played fantasy myself, I always kind of thought the uh, the warrior priests were just cool. Um, and this guy suits suits my order of sisters of battle quite nicely anyway because they are the order of the divine hammer. So of course this guy's taking it a bit literally, and he's using actual hammers. So uh, even though they're kind of they're supposed to be a sigma thing. In fantasy, it, it kind of works for 40k as well. I put a I put a las pistol um, in a holster on his belt there, and uh, I think he works remarkably well in a 40k setting because he's covered in purity seals, just like 40k and stuff as well. So I think he works just fine. So I got him. I got him done. I think he's going to be a preacher. You can have a, you can have preachers and you can have missionaries with the sisters. I think this guy's going to be more of a preacher. I'll, I'll have to come up with a different model for a missionary. He definitely looks more like a preacher. So he's got these twin hammers, which will just count as a chainsword. And he's got that lad's pistol. So there we go. Ah, oh. Oh, yes, and this is this is coming off his base because it wasn't glued on properly. But I uh, I went back over all of my sister battle models, and uh, I got this stuff. I got this stuff from Green Stuff World. It is natural leaf litter. I'd seen some people using this on their models before. Um, and it looked kind of interesting. And it's just a, it's a, just a jar, basically, of, of this, these tiny fake leaves. I don't know what it's actually made of. Uh, I've no idea. But uh, you glue it down with a bit of PVA glue. And uh, you can decorate your bases with dead leaves, which is um, kind of nice. It just adds a little bit of extra pizzazz to the bases, which previously were a bit just grey with a bit of grass, which was sort of a little... You know, we're fine, very basic, but um, with very little effort, you can suddenly make them look a little bit nicer. And as everyone knows, if you can do a really nice base on a model, it makes the model itself look much better than it actually is. It's a, it's like a wonderful optical illusion type thing. So I did that, and uh, in this box over here... Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, um, that's the rest of the... Brilliant. One moment... <laughs> All right, that wasn't quite as catastrophic as it might have sounded. Uh, I caught most of it on my knees, but um, unfortunately they are all now wonderfully jumbled up. And by wonderfully, I mean this is a massive pain in the ass. Great. Um, but <laughs> this is all the Sisters of Battle I've done so far, and yeah, I went back over most of them. Actually, that's that's a bad example, but um, I went back over the most of them and added a bit of a bit of the leaf litter to them as well. I really like this one actually. This is a Sister Superior um, with a custom base that I got from, I can't remember where, it was a shop on eBay. They were selling these lovely custom bases that were very well suited to Sisters of Battle. And uh, the head is from Forge World. It's one of the female Stormcast heads from Age of Sigma that you can get on Forge World. And uh, yes, I was quite pleased with this, with this particular little kit bash. It looks really nice with the laurels on there, the gold laurels, and pointing with the chainsword, and she's got a hel holding her helmet, which she's just taken off, I, guess, I suppose. No 
wind blowing through her hair. It's just a, just a, if I do say so myself, I was really pleased with this one. But anyway, yeah, I've gone back through almost all of them and, uh, did I put any on you? No, you, but you've got the toxic sludge on there, which, which helps instead. But I went back through most of these and uh, added a few dead leaves just to make the bases look a teeny tiny bit more interesting. Um, which I think is good. Uh, that is a Howling Banshee. I've still got some more Howling Banshees to do. Some of the old metal ones, which I bought before the new plastic ones came out. Uh, there's a few Eldar bits in here as well, because, uh, mainly because uh, I'm doing some Guardians. I'm finally getting around to doing some uh, Eldar Guardians for my Craft World army, and uh, I decided I, I I didn't fancy the the default Guardian models. Uh, they just they don't look that great to me. They're kind of old. And uh, they bring back loads of bad memories of me trying to paint Bale Tan Guardians well, in, in like 3rd edition when I had a Bale Tan army. And it was my first encounter with trying to paint with white paint on models. And it was before I had any spray primer, so I was brush painting on white paint onto grey models. And oh, bad memories. Bad memories. So I decided if I was going to do Guardians for this army, I wanted to kit bash them and convert them a bit to make them a bit different for my own sake. And this is kind of what I came up with. Um, I believe, are they Shadow Warriors? I can't remember what they're called. The um, the, the Dark Elf slash High Elf unit from Fantasy. Um, that is the main body with the cloaks. And also, obviously, I've, I've stuck on the Guardian Arms and the Guardian Helmets as well. As well as some other little bits like the extra magazines and the grenade um, on there. On a few of these guys. So then we've got little swords, which don't do anything in terms of game rules but they look all right uh there's one around here somewhere i've got a weapon platform here which is the bright lance uh, one of them around here has got sort of like uh, the remote control for it i mold him with but because it's all jumbled up now i don't know where he oh there he is there we go he's got the the visor helmet and and stuff and i think they look okay honestly he's got a shuriken catapult on his back he's got the sort of gimbal Esque uh, joystick contraption, uh, so he'll hang out next to the heavy weapon platform, basically. Um, so I got a squad of ten converted up like this, which I'm gonna paint very soon, hopefully. Um, and I'm jolly pleased with them. I think uh, the idea really is to make them look a bit like rangers, because uh, I've got some rangers here actually. Hold on, Eldar Rangers. They, these are some of my favourite 40k models. I love these guys. They are so damn cool. I I really like them. They're like, they're like Lord of the Rings Wood Elves in space. I think Rangers are so freaking cool. And part of the, the backstory of my craft world, Bikarath, is that they used to be Exodites. That due to warp storms and other shenanigans like that, they lost their planet and had to sort of uh, head off into space and, and walk the paths of the, the Asuriani like the rest of the Craftworld Eldar. Um, so they are Craftworlders these days, but they weren't always. And so they have um, a particular affinity for sort of like um, uh, woodland warfare and uh, that kind of thing, guerrilla warfare, that sort of thing, the kind of stuff that Exodites would, would have gotten up to. Um, I had an idea at one point to, to convert some Shining Spears w who were riding dinosaurs like the old Exodites from back in the day. Because Exodites, if you're not familiar, they were Eldar that went to, instead of living on craft worlds, they went to basically live as kind of sort of hippies on uh, on, on Maiden Worlds. And uh, essentially they were, they, were, they, they were represented very early in, I think, second edition you could take them. And they were basically, you had to convert them, I think. But uh, they were Eldar running around on dinosaurs shooting lasers at people, and they were really friggin' cool. And I'd love, th I'd love GW to bring Exodites back again someday. Um, and Corsairs as well. Because currently at the minute we have like four flavours of Eldar at the moment in 40k. You've got Craft Welds, you've got Drukari, you've got Harlequins, and you've got Yunari. But in addition to those, there's there's two other groups that aren't currently represented in the game, and those are the Exodites and the Corsairs, which are the Eldar Pirates. Um, and I'd love to see both of those make a comeback. That'd be really sweet. But anyway, um, so yeah, the the the, the backstory for my guys is they used to be Exodites, so they're very good at the whole um, woodland guerrilla warfare thing. So I got... I got, as you know in this army, I've got a bunch of rangers, but the, the guardians as well, they're going to look a little bit like rangers themselves. 
that's why they've got the cloaks and stuff which I'll paint up in a very similar way um, and I think one of the craft world traits I'm going to pick for these guys is the uh, Masters of Stealth one or whatever it's called the one that uh, if they're 12 inches more than 12 inches away from the enemy they receive the benefit of cover um, I could just run them in as, as a LATOC, but I don't want to. I want to do a bit. I want to be. They're kind of vaguely similar to a LATOC in a way, but I want them to be a bit different. Because the other thing about these guys is they do have a lot of howling banshees, because these particular Eldar, due to previously being exercised, they have a slightly savage streak to them, which is why the craft world has like a disproportionately large number of howling banshees. So um, I think I'm going to take the, the stealthy trait, and then for the second craft world trait, it's gonna, probably going to be something close combat related. Um, I think there's one you can take where you get to re-roll ones to hit on in the first round of melee, and it's called like Savage Blades or something like that, and that 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 sounds like it would probably fit quite nicely. So that's the plan anyway. So there you go. I've been uh, I've been revisiting the basing on my sister of battle and uh, doing a bit of Eldar stuff. Oh, hello. Speaking of Dark Eldar, just forgot I forgot this was in here. This is a female Archon I kit bashed ages ago actually. Totally forgot about this. Again, you've not seen my Dark Eldar on the channel yet, I don't think, but I, I'm I'm looking forward to playing with them at some point soon. Uh, because they're they're really quite fun. Evil little gits, the Dark Eldar. But the problem with my Dark Eldar at the minute is um, they're not they're not a really um, an army that was built for eighth or indeed ninth edition so much really. Um, in fact, they probably would work a bit better in ninth. But basically, the force composition is a bit wonky. Because uh, I have a bunch of witch cult units as well as cabalite units, um, and some uh, homunculus coven units, but I don't have the troops' choices necessary to make up the patrol detachments for the thing and the thing. If you guys, some of you will know what I'm talking about, the rest of you won't. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it doesn't matter. I can't explain now; it'll take too long. But um, yeah, I need another archon or a dracon in this case, because I've already got an archon, but this one's going to be a dracon, which is like the second in command. You, 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 Dark Eldar equivalent of a lieutenant, I suppose. So that's what she's going to be. Um, I also need to make a succubus, and I need to make some witches, so that I can use my witch cult units like my bikes. And I need to make some racks as well for the homunculus covens, because I've got a, I've got a homunculus, and I've got like a, a couple of taloses uh, and some grotesques, but I don't have any racks, which is the troops' choice for, for covens. Because the thing about Dark Eldar, if you're not that familiar, is they're effectively like three armies in one. Uh, you get covens, you get witch cults, and you get cabals. And you can run all three as a sort of joint force together if you want to, but you need the right units to make that work, and I don't currently have those, which is why you've not seen me play them yet on the channel because I don't have the units I need um, so that they're, they've been on the to-do list for quite a while now um, and I'll get around to them at some point but yeah Just focusing on the craft welders first though because uh, I really like those guys they're pretty cool I get very nostalgic about Eldar not only because they have lots of old models because they haven't had their model update uh, model range updated in a while but also like I said I used to collect Eldar back in the day so uh, much nostalgia. Anyway, uh, other stuff. Anything else got going on right now? Let's see. All right, place this box very carefully so it doesn't fall off again. Um, all right, here's some stuff that arrived ages ago. Um, a Lieutenant Amulius. Don't know what to do with you yet. I uh, could add him to the Revenants, but the thing is, I've been I've been kind of failing to make my mind up on what I want to do with. Uh, with the Revenants. I don't know whether I want to expand them any further, or if I want to start building up that little Blood Angels kill team that I had into a into a, a small army, in which case I might make Amulius here part of the Silver Saints, my Blood Angels successor chapter instead. So I'm a bit cursed with indecision with this guy right now. I can't decide whether to add him to the Revenants, or maybe embark on that Blood Angel successor project I've been meaning to do for ages. So, don't know what to do with him yet, but I've got him. I ordered him, pre ordered him during the first lockdown. Um, so, yeah. Do you mind? Uh, also, I have a Hospitaller. Uh, she arrived shortly before I kind of temporarily quit the hobby. Uh, she's the medic lady for the, uh, for the Sisters of Battle. Absolutely fantastic model. Look at that. It looks heart stoppingly fragile. Uh, so I don't know if this is one I want to take on the road with me very often, but um, really, really, really wonderful model. 
Um, so I, 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 the, moment, the moment they revealed this one back and back when they were releasing all the new Sister Battle stuff, I was like immediately like, yes, I want one of these. They look really cool. So I got a hospital, and uh, I've also got Sister Tariana Palos here, which was the the other model they they released in the first lockdown alongside Amulius here. Um, like exclusive thing. I don't know whether you can buy her separately normally nowadays, but uh, you had to pre-order her during the first lockdown in the UK here to get her originally. I don't know what to do with her exactly. I could just make her a Sister Superior like she's intended. Because uh, if I did have an extra Sister Superior, it would allow me to split up some of my squads occasionally if I wanted to run smaller ones. Um, alternatively, I could, with a bit of kit bashing, turn her into a Cannoness. Which wouldn't be a bad idea, because, I mean, she her model is much more detailed than your average sister of a battle from the Battle Sisters kit. Like, she's got all that extra detailing and stuff on her, on her shin guards and, and whatnot. And with those extra purity seals and stuff, she's a really, really, really nice-looking model. And I, don't, I do wonder if it would be a bit of a waste just to make her another Sister Superior. So I might, with a few modifications, turn her into a Cannoness instead. Because at the minute I only have one Cannon S at the, at the moment, so I, and I do need at least one more, I think. Um, so that might be what I do with her instead. She's based on this bit of artwork here, which you've probably seen before. Um, but yeah. Anyway. That's it, I think. That's all I've got to work with for now. Uh, I will return with future updates as they happen. Alright, Hobby Vlog Part 2, Take 2. I just filmed this whole section of the video and then my phone ate it at the end. So I'm gonna do it all over again. Hooray! Welcome back folks. It's a Wednesday, it's two days since I did the last bit. And uh, as you can see, I've been busy doing some Sisters of Battle stuff. I have got some more Battle Sisters here, the old metal ones. Um, I got three heavy weapons ones. I got a melter, multi-melter, a heavy flamer, and a heavy bolter. And I've got this lady here, who I believe is the original, original, original old school Canon S model. However, I'm going to be using her as, as a sister superior because that's kind of what more what she looks like these days, really. She doesn't have nearly enough uh, fancy gubbins on her to be a Canon S these days. But uh, yeah, she's got a combi flamer and a big, uh, rel I don't know what that is, a big icon thing for bashing people over the head with, I suppose. So that's good. Um, they're on 25 mil slot bases because they're the old metal ones. I know it's funny, really, because we've been waiting for so long to get plastic sisters of battle, and here I am buying old metal ones instead. <laughs> but uh, truth be told, I really like the old Jez Goodwin sculpts for these. I really, really do. And uh, they're really simple to build as well because it's just a solid thing where you put the backpack on, you put it in the slotter base, and that's it. Um, because uh, they. The plastic sisters are wonderful, but they are a bit fiddly to build, and the sprues for them are laid out in a very strange sort of way, so, um, and I just like old school models in general anyway, so hey, there it is. Uh, I'm going to put, to fix the 25mm base problem, I'm going to put some of these base extenders on them, like so. There we go, to make them into 32s, so they match the rest of the army. Uh, these are wonderful little things, these are the TT adapters. 25 to 32 mil adapters, 50 of them in this bag. Uh, they're from TT Adapters, and uh, they're recommended to me by Dan because he rebased his entire orc army of snake bites um, using these uh, last year, I think it was. And uh, they're brilliant. They're bloody brilliant. These things. You just pop them on, and uh, you wouldn't notice once it's all painted and stuff. Like the this priest here, for example. He was actually done with with extenders. Look, there you go. But uh, to look at him, you wouldn't you would you'd think he was just on a regular 32 millimeter base. They are wonderful bits of kit. These they fit on with just regular plastic glue. Job done. It's great. So I'm going to use those. Uh, I've got more metal battle sisters in the mail. Actually, the main bulk of them actually is coming still in the post. So uh, speaking of the post, I got woken up this morning by the postman because he was delivering me these. These are from eBay. These are going to be. Uh, Death Cult Assassins. That's what these are going to be. They are not the official Death Cult Assassin models, 
They are a conversion somebody's done, and I liked them so much, I just decided to get them. Uh, they're using... I don't know what the base model's from. really have no idea, but I know that they're using Grey Knight Power Swords. I do recognise those. But the rest of them, I don't know. They look kind of cool. They've, they've got a vaguely Assassin's Creed kind of look to them, especially with that hood, you know? Really kind of neat. I do like them. Uh, Death Cult Assassins are interesting. They are um, not to be confused with the other Imperial Assassins. Death Cult Assassins are a whole separate thing that's kind of weird. Uh, they basically worship Death Cults. Uh, cults which believe they can worship the Emperor through murdering people, basically. They're kind of weird. And a lot of them are deeply, deeply heretical. However, you can include some Death Cult Assassins in your Sisters of Battle Army if you want to. They're one of the many weird auxiliary units they get, like Arco-Flagellants Arco and Crusaders and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah. The official models for them are these... Well, they're in old, crappy resin fine cast for one thing, which I hate. Uh, but they're also sort of... Um, they're from the 90s, I think which means that they're from their era of Sisters of Battle models that were sort of weirdly sexualized, like the uh, like the the old Repentias uh, and stuff like that. And basically the, the, the old Death Cult Assassin models are... Uh, they're basically these ladies wearing skin-tight BDSM leather outfits with masks, and uh, they're a bit peculiar, really. Um, and I much prefer these. These are so much better. So, uh, I, I wasn't too massively big into the sort of very sexualized and fetishy Sisters of Battle stuff of yesteryear. That was kind of weird. I know I'm not the only person who was weirded out by that, because I remember I, I've read an interview recently with uh, one of the Black Library authors, Danny Ware, and she's written a lot of uh, really good Sisters of Battle novels. Um, but until very recently, she refused to do anything involving Repentia in the novels she wrote because she found them completely ridiculous until recently where they got redone and, and rejigged and their models look much more sensible now and stuff so here you go death cult assassins non-bdsm fetish edition uh it works out law wise too anyway because um apparently there's loads and loads of different death cults all across the imperium and they're all very different from one another so you could conceivably have death your death cult assassins look any way you want them to really and have it still be fit the narrative. So uh, that's what these are for. They're going to be Death Cult Assassins. Lovely jubbly. I've also built the Hospitaller on her massive diorama base thing, which is really cool. The hallucinating wounded sister on the base who's calling out to possibly the God Emperor. Who knows? Um, but here she is. Oh, sorry, the lighting's not very good here, is it? Um, yeah, here she is. I didn't glue on the big bits of parchment with the flo flying birds and stuff because I just knew that, you know, fifteen within 15 minutes of me finishing painting it and putting it in the case, it would break. So uh, I left those bits off. It still looks lovely even without them. And uh, that's great. So she's the field medic for the sisters. Um, good stuff. And Sister Tariana, the limited edition Sister of Battle, I got. I did indeed turn her into a cannoness in the end. So here she is. Uh, she's got a big cape, which I took from a Primaris Captain kit, I think. And uh, she's got a laurel wreath there on adorning her backpack as a sort of shiny bit of gubbins, because, you know, Sister Battle do like the shiny gubbins. And uh, she's got a big hammer, because this is the Order of the Divine Hammer. So I literally gave her a Divine Hammer, because that is Gal Moraz itself, which I took from my old Carl France on Deathclaw kit that I had lying around. I wasn't going to use the hammer from it, so uh, there you go. That is, for those who are uninitiated, that is the Warhammer, as in the Warhammer that the game Warhammer is named after. It's it's Galmaraz, Sigmar's Warhammer. So um, I've literally given her a Divine Hammer because she's part of the Order of the Divine Hammer. There you are. Fun little Easter egg, I guess I'm considering it, but uh, it just looks really nice. Sadly, there's no rules for giving a Canoness a hammer, so I'll just have to count it as a blessed blade, I think. But it works for me. It looks pretty cool. I had to shorten it a bit, because um, by default, the shaft was quite a little... Well, the shaft is a little bit too long. That is what she said, etc., etc. <laughs> but I had to cut it down a bit so that it would fit here. Uh... Or as a one-handed weapon rather than a two-handed weapon. 
and uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty dope personally. I'm very pleased with it. Be painting her up soon. That'll be my second Cannon S now. I think she's going to be the fighty close combat Cannon S versus my uh, other one, which is she's kind of the old and grey uh, veteran Cannon S that leads the uh, the whole sort of uh, oh, what's what's the word convent? Yeah. Um, and she's gonna. But she's the backfield buffing canoness. This is gonna be the the fighty bashy up front, getting stuck into killing the heretics canoness. So there you go. I've also got vehicles. Got this of eBay. This is one of the older style emulators. Big transport that doubles up as a flame tank. And uh, I have converted it a little bit now. Whoever had this originally undercoated it in red which is actually kind of handy right now because you can see in grey the bits that I added. So new emulators, the new plastic ones, they have a heavy bolter on it in addition to the flame guns. Uh, so I decided I needed to kit bash a heavy bolter onto this thing somehow to make it WYSIWYG, and I have. Normally, you see this middle bit here where the bolter is, normally what goes there is this sort of perspex screen thing which looks kind of like a TIE fighter cockpit, it's this round glass thing. Um, but that, that, that instead of that, I've got this um, old Imperial Guard heavy bolter I wasn't using, um, just mounted in the middle there, and I think it works. I think it, it works for me anyway. So she's got the two flamers, and then she's got a heavy bolter in the middle to gun down heretics with from a slightly longer range, as well as a box of spare ammo welded onto the side there, and some ammo coming along in the belt there. In an ideal world. I would have liked to have had that belt go all the way up there and join up to, to the box there, but I, I couldn't make that work. I, my sculpting skills are not good enough to make that happen, I'm afraid. So um, there you go. It's going to be like that. So yeah, it's one of the older style emulators, as I said. I will get some of the newer ones. Uh, but um, in this army, I like the idea that Sisters of Battle tanks are kind of sacred relics in their own right. So I like the idea of all of my tanks looking a little bit different. So that's why I've got an older style emulator in addition to eventually the newer ones too. And speaking of old style stuff, ugh, this thing is heavy. It's an old style exorcist with all the metal stuff. Um, as you can see, it's only partially intact. I've got all the spare bits I need to build it again, although actually I, I dropped part of it and I don't know where it's gone. So I'm gonna have to turn the room upside down looking for the, uh, the piano bit in the front here because that's gonna drive me mental otherwise. But uh, yeah, it's from the old metal exorcists, because exorcists in particular are definitely sort of treated as holy relics by the sisters, and so never, therefore I want my my exorcists to look different from one another, like look look unique, you know. Uh, so I've got one of these old style ones, and I'm going to get a new style one as well. Uh, I am starting to regret this though, because um, as you can see, it's not really intact. I'm going to have to glue it together, and. Uh, these old metal exorcists were legendary for being absolute bastards to try and glue together, unfortunately. Uh, so I'm kind of not really looking forward to that at all. But uh, it needs to be done, and it will look lovely once it's finished. All these uh, like gold plates on here and stuff like that, and all the parchment, and uh, it should look awesome, but it's, oh, it's going to be hard work. Uh, much respect to the uh, sisters players out there who built multiple of these back in the day because god I've already tried dry fitting some of it together and it's uh, it's clearly it's clear already that it's going to be a bit of a job so anyway that's that it weighs a ton as well by the way absolutely massive chonker of a tank so yeah that's going to happen I'm in a bit of a building mood rather than a painting mood at the moment as you might be able to tell um, so at the moment my plan is to build as much stuff as I can because a, a building mood for me doesn't come around very often I generally prefer painting but just for at the moment for some reason I just really I'm really into building and converting stuff so I'm gonna take advantage of that and build as much stuff as I can and then I'm gonna build that thing last because I just know that by the time I'm finished trying to build this monstrosity any enthusiasm I might have had for building will be completely gone <laughs> by the time I'm finished with this thing. So uh, I've got to do that last. I'm going to build everything else that I can for now and then do that last. So anyway, that's all I have to update you with for now. Uh, more updates to follow. Uh, I'm, all, I'm also working on a completely separate project at the minute, but it, I'm afraid it's tip-top secret. I can't tell you about it at the moment. 
it's for a future campaign and I want it to be a surprise so I'm afraid I can't tell you or show you anything about it yet but uh, I can tease you regardless so there you are um, if it doesn't seem like I'm getting an awful lot done in these hobby vlog updates it's because I am actually working on a totally separate thing in addition to all of these so yeah but uh, you'll see that sooner or later regardless uh, I'll be back when uh, there's more stuff to do and talk about